Right. I actually get my notes. Should we describe why there's two of us? Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, so there's two of us today because um, the Kai Heritage Project is a partnership. Um, so we work together with Cardiff University um, and also a local charity who I'm employed by, which is called Action in Cairo and Ely, which is a social activist charity. Um, and we use the model of asset-based community development to really focus how we use what already skills and assets exist in the community to address any barriers or problems. Um, and the charity itself um, engages in lots of different issues. Um, so we have like food pantries, social crisis um, or financial crisis support, mental health support and social prescribing. Um, but then this project specifically looks at the really rich heritage in the area, which includes a Roman villa, um, an Iron Age hill fort with also Neolithic and Bronze Age heritage um, and uses it to facilitate social activism. Hello, I am the other perspective in the room. My name is Jade and I am a PhD student at Cardiff University. I've been working with the charity and the community there for about a year and a half, two years now. So the the data that we're presenting in this conference, that's why there's two of us, we have the two perspectives, uh, is based on an archaeological dig that we did this year. So the data was produced by myself. I was a a participant doing observation. Participant observation, that is the word, uh, based ethnography at this community dig this summer. And I also did interviews with uh, participants at the dig and staff members. So I was mainly trying to get voices from different levels of engagement with the dig, from people who were just participating for one day from charity groups, people who spent the whole period volunteering at the dig, and then the supervisors themselves and what they believed about community engagement and participation and making heritage equitable. Uh, So the data has then been uh, thematically analysed from a feminist perspective and considering memory and identity to be a collaborative and social act that is happening at dig sites like this. Okay, so this project is quite interdisciplinary um, and it sits at the intersection of archaeology, heritage, art and community activism. So it's important to recognise that the core aims of this project, which is social heritage, is important and different from other archaeological projects and as such, it's important to be conscious of these differences um, in audience and outcomes, because we believe that from the evidence gathered at this particular dig and from our pre- previous experiences in the field, that the topics of people, places, space and time are really vital um, to the impact of social heritage and activism. And therefore, we are arguing for the importance of those four key areas in designing and executing archaeological digs with social activism at its heart. So... The dig relied on the skill set of staff and involved months of organisation and expertise. So alongside the necessary archaeological experts, we recognised the necessity of soft skill tasks. So in order to effectively include community members into the space, we utilised staff and volunteers with an established set of people skills to support with the following. So like Greek community members who may have just wandered into the dig site because our gates were always open. We were in a public space. People were absolutely invited in. And we we relied on staff and and volunteers to gauge their level of comfort and interest with the site. And from that, then adapt the dig narrative to their understanding so that it was more equitable. We then might partner, partner up the volunteers and participants with appropriate students or supervisors. Again, depending on their passion, their d- interest, what they could or could not do. We were very open in discussion with ability and all that jazz. And would then facilitate the volunteer uh, participants' understanding and engagement with DIG. However, these engagements vary from day to day and person to person. And therefore, this labour is continuous and can often be invisible. Um, sorry, I'm losing my voice. <laughs> Perhaps the most significant element of um, executing a successful social heritage event um, is the people at multiple levels of engagement. And we stress the importance of all these voices together. It's important that we work to reduce those barriers to participation, which can include ability levels, um, financial or educational backgrounds and interest levels. Um, and the reason we say this is because we want people to engage as much or as little as they like. And all of that is really valid. Um, and then that way we're trying to make that heritage engagement equitable. Our projects are co-productive and our participants are active stakeholders with ownership and a voice in the emerging narratives. So we believe that community and social narratives can coexist alongside archaeological narratives, although they may exist for 
um, a variety of audiences and purposes. So we consider this to be an important for creating and sustaining a sense of social belonging and a cohort identity with blended learning throughout the social networks established at the community dig. Um, sorry. So here we've got um, a quote from a community member. Um, this illustrates that it's a unique opportunity for community digs and social activism. So multiple participants identified their experience of the community as a blend of the community and the archaeology. And often participants ranked them as equally significant to their experience. So this idea of community with purpose is benefited by the multidisciplinary nature of the dig and encourages a polyvocal experience, all of which we consider valid and valuable. So the word cloud here consists of words taken from the participant interviews where they outlined what was significant about their experience. And what we found was that every participant's answer was unique. We found that there was a mix of personal outcomes, which include well-being, education, socialising and community outcomes, such as sharing local heritage, the opportunities that the dig presented and the legacy for the younger generation or others. Learning opportunities were also highly valued and personal enjoyment. Heaven forbid we forget the fun of, be, of getting involved with a dig. A recurring narrative... Oh, no, I skipped a little bit. Uh, no, I didn't. Sorry. A recurring narrative is the importance of doing something hands-on together. As Marilyn from the previous slide called it, a community with purpose. For several participants, the value of the heritage lay in uniting the past with the present and the future, which roots that our social activism is a act for the future generations. So part of our ethos in this engagement is being facilitators to the participants' needs and desires and, where possible, not placing limits on the participants or ascribing a bias towards one form of knowledge. Every participant came to the stick with their own story and desires and we see it as our job to fulfil and contribute to give the participants the positive experience. So, moving on to the topic of place, as we have introduced at the beginning, we have a geographically bound place that has amazingly rich heritage and despite that archaeological and historical importance it has not been commonly included in the wider general Cardiff narrative. Uh, one reason for that may be that because the community has ne negative stereotypes and associations and these are not untrue the community does have problems with poverty, education and access to resources. We know from talking to community members that they find these narratives reductive and incomplete. We therefore have an opportunity here to create dynamic relationships with them to address these misrepresentations. It could be through them sharing oral histories and memories with us, or us providing historical and archaeological data to them. But it is a two-way relationship where this space is used to collaborate with community members in a roundtable approach. So, moving away from the notion of empowerment and the idea that we've gifted something to the community, we instead open up an opportunity for them to engage and create their own meaning. Demonstrated by this quote from a local school teacher, it was highlighted that a key outcome for this individual was in the opportunity that it presented to young people and a potential legacy impact for future generations. And one of the key outcomes of this project is that outreach is a continuous investment and not a one-off intervention. Space is not just about the, you know, the physical place, but instead it's the area of people, thoughts, cultures and ideas. And we have to be conscious that we are in people's homes and where we naturally ask people to respect the heritage of the physical site, but we also need to be conscientious that we respect the space of the community at the same time. But digging together provided this physical engagement with the notion of moving through time via their landscape. And at the same time, we found the conversations whilst they were digging took the shape of local folklore, knowledge and storytelling. So here we see the development of cohort identity and encourage a feeling of, set of social belonging. We provide, provided a safe space for people to get together, work together and learn from each other brought together in place and time by the community dig. Everyone comes with their own knowledge and passions and contribute that they can contribute to others to the site. And we invest time in helping participants flourish. Some people may participate for an afternoon and others have con contributed multiple weeks. 
this work can be valued in multiple ways. But one of the most effective that we found from the, this particular dig was the gift of food and ice cream, as this was conducted in the middle of a heat wave and it was very hard to do. Again, this is a form of invisible labour from the staff perspective, as the participants often didn't know who the food had come from, who had gifted it. But the, from the participant perspective, the gifting of the food conveyed a sense of gratitude and care for their time, labour and skills. So from our experiences and the data collected in this dig, we've considered these topics of people, place, space and time to be the four areas vital for the su success of social activism at this ar archaeological dig. Um, but we once again highlight this interdisciplinary nature of the project and how our efforts are focused on the community engagement aspect of the project and not solely on archaeological outcomes. So these would be our main feed forward suggestions for similar social activist heritage projects based on those four topics. Um, we think that people, both staff and participants, are the most significant in the project for being successful. Our community has a rich heritage and there is a really great opportunity in an interdisciplinary project for individuals and to, be to benefit and create a cohort identity or this community with purpose through story sharing and the memory work. Uh, that is done. Thank you very much.